Today we're going to make this media console out of half-inch thick Baltic birch plywood. The fastest way to build this piece is with a table saw. But I know not everyone has one, so I'm going to start off by going over a couple of other ways you could build this console without one. At the very least, you're going to want to have a circular saw, some clamps, and something with a straight edge. So let's get started. In this type of building, consistency is much more important than accuracy. So that's why you see me here clamping pieces together. Basically, if you need a top and bottom, and you're going to use a circular saw, try to cut them at the same time so that they're identical. That eliminates 90% of the problems that human error can cause right off the bat. Here for a straight edge, I'm just using a long piece of plywood that I had lying around. In fact, I always keep this piece around for this specific purpose, so this is the most affordable method you could use. A slightly quicker but more expensive method would be to use a track saw. If you use this method, again, try to stack and clamp the sheets together so that you can cut multiple pieces at the same time to ensure consistency. And finally, the fastest and most consistent tool you can use, if you have one, is a table saw. Any of these three options will allow you to rip all of your pieces to width and cross-cut them all to length, but I have a table saw, so I'm going to use that method for the rest of my cuts. All I've done so far is cut out two identical pieces for the top and bottom of my cabinet, and then three smaller identical pieces for my two sides and a vertical partition. Next, I glued those five pieces together. Here, at the very least, you're going to need some glue and some clamps. Unless you want to use screws or nails. Again, you can see that you can do this with specialized tools, like the corner clamps I'm using on the left side of your screen, or by simply gluing and clamping like I'm doing on the right-hand side. Next, I glued in my vertical partition. And then, once all of those were dry, after about 30 minutes, I glued on the top. While the top was drying, I started cutting out all of my interior pieces for the cabinet. These pieces are all going to be about a half of an inch narrower than the others. This will give the finished piece a more interesting step inset look and kind of lighten things aesthetically. Here's a quick drawing that goes into more detail. So here you can sort of see how everything's arranged. Traditionally when people build cabinets, they install shelves and vertical partitions into a dado. A dado is basically a recessed groove the width of the piece that it's inserted into. Here, we're creating a dado, but by adding material instead of removing it. So, while this technique is being used to make the piece look more interesting, it's also serving to make the cabinet significantly more structurally sound. Okay, so after I finished cutting the rest of my pieces to width and length, I made this sort of sandwiched shelf piece that uses one of the wider pieces and two of the narrower pieces, and then left that to glue up. Then, I started assembling all the interior pieces. I found that the easiest way to do this was to cut them to final length by referencing the interior of the cabinet. Sometimes I'd nail it on the first shot, and sometimes I'd have to walk back and forth making cuts and trying to fit the piece like five times or so before I got it to fit. Basically, you just want to keep nibbling away at the piece until it fits. Remember, you can always keep removing material, but it's a lot more difficult to add it back on. And from there, it was just a matter of repeating the same process over and over until everything was in. Before I brought everything in, I attached two quarter inch strips of plywood as a back, leaving a little opening for cable management. And then I sanded using 180 grit sandpaper and applied two coats of general finish armor seal in a satin finish. Then I flipped the whole thing over and attached some hairpin legs. I got these things from DIYHairpinLegs.com. I really wanted a little pop of color and was happy with this sort of minty, sea foamy color I picked. And that was pretty much it. The thing that I like about this build is that it celebrates the plywood rather than trying to hide it. And that's why I went with Baltic Birch. I find that it has the most aesthetically appealing ply lines of any plywood. For more information, click on the links in the description box below. Be sure to check out our Instagram to see what we're working on next, and make sure you've subscribed to this channel if you haven't already. I'm Chris from Four Eyes Furniture. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.